Welcome to PTI's educational webinar mini-series. Today we're going to be talking about positive controls as they relate to validating a leak test method. So a positive control is a manufactured leak or defect and we use it to validate the performance and effectiveness of a test method. The type of positive control that you use is very important and as it relates to the container type, the product that's in that container will definitely impact how that positive control performs and how it impacts the results that you produce. In the pharmaceutical space, especially with parenterals, this is very critical because we're looking for small defects, but for certain class products such as biologics, the, the risk of that product actually plug in, plugging a defect is quite great. So again, with parenterals or injectable drugs, these are some of the most sensitive products out there and the highest risk. So we are looking for very small defects. The CURE study from 1997 shows defects below 10 microns being critical for product sterility. So there's a variety of ways that we can create that defect. In that study, they did use pipettes, but as we will see in this presentation, that's not typically the best way to validate your leak test method. So positive control types, there are many different types of positive controls and ways that you can make them. Certainly the most natural type of positive control is the best way to go about proving a test method. So you can make real defects by cracking the glass of a container or tearing or making a puncture or a crack in the body of a pouch or film material. So that would be a mechanical type defect. But if we have to create defects that are smaller than 10 microns, there are certainly other ways that we can simulate that or create that effect. The pipette is certainly one way that you can. It's constricting the flow, similar to the capillary, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And then you have more common methods such as a laser drilled defect, which is a certified type defect, or you can introduce a flow meter to simulate the leak. So a defect size is correlated to a gas flow rate. So we can actually simulate a defect size by introducing a flow rate of a certain amount. So if I want to simulate a 10 micron defect, if this is a vacuum based leak test method, I can introduce a 0.84 cc per minute flow rate to simulate that defect. But you can also restrict the flow of gas using a capillary. Now a capillary is nothing more than a straw or a tube with a certified internal diameter. So with that certified internal diameter, you can then create a restricted flow and based on the length of that capillary, create a flow rate that is either greater or less based on the length of that capillary. So a capillary with an internal diameter of 30 microns can flow at a very small flow rate if you elongate it out to 40 millimeters, or it can flow as great as 3.26 standard cc's per minute if there's no depth to that defect. So again, we can create a smaller defect or simulate a smaller micron pinhole by taking that 30 micron capillary and extending it out. So the way that we use capillaries is you take the capillary itself, you puncture a hole into the container and slide the capillary in, gluing it in place. And that's the way that we, we introduce it into the container. Now you may ask, how do we know that we're not introducing more leakage around the capillary itself as it's inserted into the container and glued? And you can validate that by gl placing glue on the tip of the capillary and proving that the container still remains leak free if you have both the capillary glued in place as well as the tip of the capillary glued. So you can validate the method that way. Now capillaries, they don't work as well when you're dealing with liquids. And the, the principle is very simple. You do restrict gas airflow with a capillary, but the moment that that capillary itself or a pipette comes into contact with the liquid, you have what's called capillary action and the liquid pulls forward up that defect up through the capillary and that affects the overall restricted flow rate that you were producing with just a gas leak. And so that's really how 
the, the capillary is suitable for gas defects only and not liquid. Now, a pipette, similar to a capillary, is an elongated tube. The difference with the pipette is that the certified defect or the very small defect is located at the tip of the pipette and then it flutes outward to a one millimeter internal diameter tube. Now, the reason why a pipette is worse than a normal capillary is that it draws that liquid up into that fluted space, creating a larger basin for vaporization. So a pipette is even worse to use in validating a parenteral type application. But again, the moment that that tip makes contact with the liquid, the liquid pulls up into that capillary or the pipette, creating a large basin for vaporization. So here again, you can see different defect types and how that liquid vape, uh, the liquid gets drawn up into the pipette to create that opportunity to be vaporized for a, uh, an easy leak detection. So again, we do not recommend the use of pipettes or capillaries for these applications. A protonaceous product will be easier to detect when simulating that defect using a pipette. And in that case, the pipette is not an ideal condition for validating the test method and it's not representative of the true defects that are produced. So one method for producing positive controls is laser drilling and that in laser drill defects the laser is actually removing material from the defect site and the defect size is validated after the fact using a certified flow measurement and that's how we can prove that the defect itself is as close to a true defect. And you can see that these defects are not just pure holes, but they are in fact complex in their geometry. Creating cracks is another great way to produce positive controls that reflect real world defects. And it's very simple. Just use some safety precautions when doing so because it does involve heat and cracking the glass. It first starts by scratching the glass surface in the location where you want to create a crack then heating that glass surface for about three to five seconds, a very short period of time, and then applying a droplet of water. That droplet of water will create a thermal shock and create that crack. Now the cracks are very unique and different and they vary in their geometry. And so after the fact, you actually have to validate that leak size against a certified flow measurement. And in this case, we used helium. So we created these defects and then we certified that leak size against the helium leak rates. And that gave us this wide range of defect sizes that we produced. And so you can see that a crack can produce defects below one micron, but as well as above 10 microns. So in summary, there are a variety of ways that we can produce defects. You can simulate it in a, with a gas space container using a capillary or a pipette. And then as you move into a liquid type container, a liquid fill container, simulating that defect with a more real world defect is critical to properly validate a test method. So in conclusion, there are a variety of ways to make positive controls to validate your leak test method. Micro pipettes and capillaries are only appropriate for dry applications. And as you go into liquid fill containers, the use of laser drill defects or other real world defect types are critical to validate that test method. So with that, I thank you for joining us for this mini webinar and we look forward to having you join us for more.